occurred to me on the subway. <laughs> um, we will get around to talking about Di Dallas Buyers Club because that's what everyone wants to hear about. But I saw you last night on the Actors Studio series. Woo! Bravo. And <laughs> I got very curious about how you learn to do what you do, and if there are particular people along the way that you learn things from. Yeah. Um, 1992, I went to the right bar, met the right guy. It was Don Phillips. He was in town casting a, a film. Uh, Five hours later, we got kicked out of So Said Bar, and he said, have you ever done any acting before? And I said, I was in a Miller Lite commercial for that long. It didn't really count. It was like not even really a modeling job. It was just like, that, that was me right there. No one really didn't recognize me. But he said, I, yeah, there's a, there was a film, the script I'm in town, casting, but there's a part you might be right for. Come to this address, pick, it, pick up the script tomorrow morning, I did at 9.30. The character had um, three lines, it was in a few scenes, and I remember going back home Long ago, where I was from, and working on this character for two weeks. Came back to Redford and got it. The film and the role was David Wooderson in Film Days Confused, which was my very first film. Now, when I went and read for that, um, it was obvious to Rick that I was not that guy. One, I was, when I was in a fraternity, I had my jeans pressed, I had tucked in, I shaved before going for this job interview, because that's what I was taught to do. But, um, he, as soon as I, he said, okay, let's, let's read, I kind of kicked back and did my version of Wooderson. And he goes, I remember going, you, you, wait, you're not this guy. And I went, no, but I know who he is. And who the guy was for me at that time was who I thought my brother was when I was 10 and he was 17. So I had a very romanticized view. My brother was seven feet tall in my eyes. His car was the fastest car. His Concorde system was the best system, sound system in the world. And I remember seeing him lean against the wall in the smoking section at school, and he was cooler than James Dean to me. So it was a, it was a romanticized view of who he was. But that's when I, I mean, that my first job and how I started to approach what I was doing, even though I don't know if I really knew what I was doing, was, okay, I'm, I may not be this guy, but if I, I know who this guy is, or I, I know someone like this, whether they're that way in real life or it's how I perceive them. Um, I, uh, I'll tell a quick funny story on the way to learning what I, what it is that I do and some, some pitfalls that I learned along the way. <laughs> Days to Confuse, I ended up working for three weeks. It was a lot of improvisation. The other actors never were lobbing me lines. And I remember having a feeling like, uh, boy, I feel like you could put a blindfold on me and I can be this guy, Wooderson. I feel like you could blindfold me, press the cord, and put me in any situation, I'll go to the 7-Eleven, I can buy, I remember going, what would they, what would they buy with $5 at the 7-Eleven, or what world that, that character lives in, what would they know what they would buy, what they would wear, what they would do in any kind of situation. Um, well, after about uh, three weeks on that, which yeah, was a very, as I said, a lot of improvisation, I went on back to school, came back out to uh, Los Angeles and, and, and got a few roles, and it was around Boys on the Side, I had played a few very conservative roles, and I had about a year and a half while we auditioned, and I had to get one callback, two callbacks, three callbacks, and I, and I never got the part. And I remember feeling like I'm too tight, you know what I mean? I, I think maybe I'm studying too much. I remember telling them, talking to myself, and maybe I'm studying too much about the import of the line and, and everything, and, 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 and you know what? I think I need to go back to doing what I did when I first started, which is I was just a guy, and I improvised. So I had, a, I had a film that I was cast for, and I was playing this on-the-border Mexican drug lord. And I told myself, I said, I'm not going to look at the sides. I'm not even going to read the script. It's an on-the-border Mexican drug lord. I hear the synopsis. <laughs> I know my man. And I'll show up and just, obviously, I'll read it right before I go on. And if I know my man, that'll be like, well, that's exactly what he'd say. <laughs> I, go, I, go, I go to set that, that, that morning. All right, I'm just gonna. All I gotta do is have a glance at it. It'll be like, yep, yeah, I know, I know how to do it. Well, I look at it right before I um, say action, and it was a page and a half monologue 
in Spanish. <laughs> oh. 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 I remember I felt this drip of sweat come up on the back of my head. And, I, and I, for whatever reason, I looked over and I said, um, can, uh, can, can, can you give me that 12 minutes? Why well, I said 12 minutes, I don't know. I figured it was like not long enough to be inconsiderate, but, but long enough to maybe get a little bit of this. Anyway, it was, I think I was more of a limit. I stammered through some Spanish and, 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 and tried to look at line. So then I was like, okay, that's not the way to go. <laughs> There's a blend here of having to do your due diligence, do your study, but then being able to go there on the day and relax and throw it all away. In about 1997, uh, that same guy that I met, that cast me the days and fuse that I met in that bar, said, hey, you know what, I think it's time for you to start working with somebody. And I was sort of fearful of it. As when you're going to go learn something, and I never really learned what acting was, I was, you know, I'm also afraid of learning too much to be regimented. And I must say, when I first started learning, as this lady I worked with, Penny, in, uh, in Los Angeles, I was a little rigid. Penny Allen? Yes. Yes, I was a little rigid. Um, but then as it happens, you know, if you study, 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 you learn it, it all becomes, you know, you, you don't take it everything literally, you learn what works for you, what doesn't. And uh, uh, went from there. So I learned from her my rights as an actor. I learned from her that it, that it, that is, you know, I may start off going, "How am I this guy?" But I quick, I'm going to get to pretty soon. Wait, how is that guy me? Because it's got to go through through me when I'm going to if I'm going to portray the man. Um, I also. You know, one of the things that I've tried to do, and it's harder in some films than other, but some than others. But it's my favorite performances, my favorite kind of films, is the impasse. You know, catch so many times when you. I've noticed in scenes. I've had many times where I tried to load the scene. I remember I had a movie. I won't say the name, but I saw it and I was like, "What is it? If there's something's off." And I was told by a friend, "Well, it's like you're trying to hit a grand slam every every scene." I was like, "Ah." Oh. He's a baseball term, yeah. Sometimes you gotta bounce, sometimes you gotta sing, sometimes you gotta take a ball. Um, when it's wonderful, as y'all know, when it works, you go into a scene, you have 16 different ways to tell the truth. When you're stuck, sometimes you're just trying to protect from telling a lie. Not near as fun. Sometimes you're just like, man, I'm not feeling it. I just feel like I've gotta connect the dots, and that's all I really can do. I don't have the song, I don't feel myself in flight. Now, when it's worked, and what I try to find now, um, is from the inside out, get the guy's monologue. And this is something that's kind of come to me and it really helped me in the last couple of years. Get the guy's monologue, then I can have the dialogue. Then I can do a scene if I got the monologue. If I know what, what's the Socratic dialogue of the man that I'm playing, then have the dialogue. And it's not about the words, obviously. Um, and then I was able to just, you know, when I'm, do, I think when I do my job better, be more in that moment, not anticipate. But also when I said impasse earlier, catch. I love it when you catch somebody in a scene. I, I love entrances and exits. I love doing all the work about, well, let's backload about where the guy's coming from and why, how he got here, and where's he going. I love to finish scenes. Anytime there's the, you know, the old dot, dot, dot. Finish it, write it out. Expile, just finish writing it. And I, I write a lot. It's good to write way more than, it's ever, than I ever actually say. But I have it. It loosens me up on the out, on the entrance and the exit. And I like it when I'm seeing actors. I think I like my work best when I'm feeling like I'm being caught. Coming in and caught going out. And maybe if it's an entire, been the entire picture, if you feel like that two hours that you watched was not a, just a, 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 a finite piece of a story. I like, I like watching films and characters. I go, I have watched the film and I can't, I love imagining what they were doing the, five years before, and where they're going after that, the five years after, there's always a prequel and a sequel and, 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 and a, a follow-up, even if, even if there's not in, in, in films. I like to at least have that understanding and feel, I let my imagination go, that I got a real good idea what this guy was doing the last five years and what they'll be doing for the next 50. Um, uh, you know, I mean, it, I've been, the last two years, I've really been able to if I can, and this doesn't always happen, tap into the characters' obsessions and then just get really feverishly drunk on them, on those obsessions. Because I'm always looking for something to take literally. And I've called them like a launch pad 
lines. Sometimes you catch it in screen direction, sometimes it's written in a, in a character. A couple, David Wooderson, Days Confused. Rick Linklater writes a line that says, that's what I love about those high school girls, I get older, but they say the same age. Well, that's a line that you're like, well, who is this? Now, that, that guy's got a history. <laughs> that's not an attitude. That's really his constitution. <laughs> now the imagination goes wild and just, oh. You've got, um, you know, Dallas and Magic Mike, what, what had it was a launch pad character. I mean, there was stuff that was in there that, that they, was written in that script. I was like, oh, well, the Barnum and Bailey was just easy. I just wrote, 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 wrote. And it was so fun to go improvise. Um, the Mark Hanna character in, in Wolf of Wall Street. I mean, Terrence Winter wrote a line. I'm sitting there showing the Jordan Belfort character, The Ropes, at a lunch. And it says, you know, the secret to this is hookers and cocaine. And by the way, how many times we jack off? I mean, that's, you're going, oh, well, there's no ceiling on, on this guy. <laughs> so, be a rapper, be a poet, go. <laughs> now, obviously, if you're playing a lawyer or you're playing a, um, a scientist, someone whose vernac occupational vernacular is, has to be precise and to the moment, it's not as easy to just riff and rap. Um, but, um, I always try to find something that the character says, I go, I think, what if they think that literally? And then, you know, when you read something that you go, that's a real, real personal politic of that character. It blankets an entire performance. And it also gives me something, I think, something to fly with that I can always have in my pocket if I get in trouble in a scene. I go, well, I know that this man is about this. I know he needs this throughout. Before this story ever started and after this story goes away, I know he needs this. So if I follow that, at least, I know I can't go wrong. Um, one of some things that I've... I remember telling, write, writing this down to myself. Don't act like one, be one. Mm -hmm. And that's, a pretty, that's always a pretty mm -hmm. good one, a pretty mm -hmm. simple one. Um, you know, it's sometimes easier than others. I remember you, you were originally going to be a lawyer. Yeah. And you played a lot of lawyers. Yeah. Um, and your breakout role, Time to Kill, yeah. was a lawyer. And in a way, that part was really hard. I mean, it seemed to me extraordinary that you were this person who'd never held a film together before, and you were playing with these extraordinarily technically competent Sam Jackson and Kevin Spacey and Sandra Bullock, and, you know, I don't. I couldn't figure out how you had the nerve to take over the screen when they were on it. Just take your time and right. take the space, right. and that was extraordinary. Well, I had a couple of. I mean, one for one thing, that was my first role where I was the lead. It was, uh, um, you know, I was aware. People were telling me this is a major, big budget studio film. This is on your shoulders. But, but I remember uh, Joel Schumacher, the director at that time, he said this too, it was a great thing to say to a young, young actor. He was very early on when I would go to talk about character work, he'd go, no, hey, you're Jake. He remembers from a week before, he's like, no, stop, you're Jake. You are Jake. And so I still you know, went off and had my musings about where I was a character, where he was me, but he's kept going, no, you're Jake. It's that simple. That was his direction almost the entire time. It was a great thing to tell me at that time. It took pressure off. Um, and I think the other thing was, you know, when you work with people that are, that are good, what, we always find out that there's, we think there's going to be a, mag, they have a magic trick, but they really don't have a magic trick. But usually the people that are good at what they do, they just usually do the simple stuff really good. And they're easier to work with. And I've found, I found that. I mean, when I give you a long list of people that that's, that that's that way, they seem to be easier to work with, so um, those, are, those are two things that I know are true about that experience. Well, right now you've been on a real role where directors want you for very specific parts. There are character parts now. Yeah. Um, Magic Mike is a character part, the little part in the Scorsese movie which just scared me to death and made me put all my money back in the bank and no one just did all the Scared me. And, um, and Dallas Buyers Club, especially, I mean, it's tremendous character work. I think maybe we should take a look at a clip from Dallas Buyers Club 
So let's see if these guys can load this clip up and take it now. <laughs> 